All right. Good morning, everybody. Good lunch time already. Um, we are Finn and Carmen, and we're going to talk about something completely different today because we are going to talk about sustainability and about how we used our quite student voices to allow them, the student voice about sustainability on our campus. Yes, exactly. So um, before we begin, though, I'd like to acknowledge and thank First Nations people for enjoying relationship, connecting people, country, and ancestors, an unbreakable bond that safely stewarded and protected the land, waters, and sky for thousands, thousands of generations. And in particular that we're on, I'm gonna not pronounce this correctly, but I'm gonna try my best. Um, Jagera, Yugera, and Yugera Pol peoples. And we're both coming from Gabi Gabi land. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to present today is, first of all, we'll explain our journey, like where did we start it and how did we got up here? What are our key takeaways of it and how do you can implement the same thing to amplify your voice and impact? And it doesn't necessarily need to be in sustainability. It's based off the values that matter most to you. So let's start with our journey. So our journey started with attending the Green Summit in December 2022, last year in Asia. Uh, and we attended uh, Thailand. As you can see, it was a lovely holiday. Um, we got to see all sorts of different things. But we also went there to work. So we attended the Green Summit, which was organized in the headquarters of the United Nations, and it was organized by Humanitarian Affairs. So together with 150 students from all across the world, we learned about how to take active action in your own community and just start right here, right now, instead of trying to be perfect and trying to have everything together. So from that, um, we came out of that uh, really motivated to do something. And I should reiterate um, to all of you guys here that you don't need to attend a fancy summit to do any of this. It just helped motivate us to do so. So the first question you asked yourselves is, what, where's the gap? What, what needs to happen at our university? And for us, we actually went back to our values. So for me, I saw that we had a university that was high in sustainability. We have great global impact. However, we have all of this activity is done by the institution and students and staff in our community are passive participants in this. And so to me, that was the gap. We have all this knowledge, but we're not active in it. And for you? Yes, yeah, same, same. So I was, I'm like passionate by sustainability in general. So I always try to see how can we make more impact. And I found like connecting university knowledge with community with the students and make it sustainable together. Yeah. And so then the next question we ask ourselves is, well, who can help us? We're just two students. Um, we have an idea. <laughs> what do we do? Yeah. So <laughs> we, we first went up to our facilities management team that have a sustainability team within it. And they make decisions, say, like in composting and recycling and solar panels and things like that. So we had a meeting with um, the lead person there. And she kind of gave us a heads up that there's going to be a sustainability week later in the year. We we're like, how can we be involved? Mm -hmm. So that was a great connection. But then the next question is, we can create something that we have in our heads, but is it really what anyone else is interested in? How can we be sure that we're actually doing something that's gonna have roll on effect? So, yes. So that's why we called out to the university community. At one side, we tried to reach the student's body by like sending out posters and surveys and asking, what do you want from sustainability? Would you be interested if we do upskilling workshops? And then we also reached out to the academic and professional staff and said like, hey, we are running this initiative. Do you want to be part of this movement? And the results were overwhelming. So it turns out we're not the only people that care about this stuff. <laughs> we had a whole host of yeah. um, staff, students, academic staff, as well as professional staff came over and we formed a working group from that. Um, and they helped advise us on different things, what is already existing at our university, what's already out there. So we're not duplicating stuff, we're being more efficient with our time. And also on top of that, we had some academics say, hang on, you're proposing something that's gonna be long going. Why don't we get some students from the business and creative industries to create a business and marketing plan for you as part of their curriculum? So that's what we've got going right now. It's underway. And we also started to develop a pilot workshop. Okay. And what did we do on the way was we used very smartly the marketing at the university, because if you want to outreach and you want to reach people, you have to know 
that they know you. So we had like an opportunity, one, to get some articles about our experience at the Green Summit in the marketing campaigns. And then secondly, coincidentally, our university ranked very high in the Times Higher Education Ranking on Sustainability, which we gladly participated in then as well. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and that all led into the development of our pilot workshop. And we should say that this pilot workshop wasn't just us coming out here going, hey, sustainability, you should do it too. We have all this knowledge. We don't have the knowledge. Other people have this knowledge. But it, it's not about knowledge dissemination. We, we all kind of have a general idea of what it looks like to be sustainable in our own lives. Instead, how can we use that to motivate us? So we created a workshop that's all around engagement and empowerment, empowering yourself not us empowering them, as, as Lucy was mentioning earlier today. Mm -hmm. um, and that worked out really well. And it was really engaging. <laughs> Yeah, so here do you see some pictures of our first workshop. And as you can see, like it's very interactive. We're all sitting, hanging together. It was not like a, we were speaking to people, we were just all creating together our journey. Yeah, but along the way, so this is only the very beginning for us. We have a lot to learn and we've learned a lot so far. Um, but some key takeaways for us so far that I think that anybody with any dreams or goals that you might have, um, we thought we might sum them up for you so that you feel like you can go to your your institution, either your staff or student, mm -hmm. and you can have that one idea um, and how you can start rolling into something bigger. Yeah. First one. So the first one was um, choose a values-based initiative. So like ours for sustainability, but yours can be anything that you're passionate about. And if you use a value-based approach, you actually have a very guiding principle, but you still allow flexibility around it. So for example, both of us were like, all right, we want to do something about sustainability, but it's not set in stone how we are going to do it. And we might have our own perspective and our working group has their perspective, but just by having this main value in, in mind, like what it is that determines our decisions, it actually was easy to have flexibility yet don't get off track. Yeah. And leveraging the connections. So we quickly realized that there are people just like us with similar ideas, similar values, and those values can really create connections. For instance, that working group, we sent out to 100, that first email to about 150 academics. We started a working group of 40 professional and staff members to attend. They are passionate and it's going off of their own backs. And I know we shouldn't be doing all these volunteer things. I get that. That's a discussion that we were having before, but it's clear that these values really drive who we are and we're passionate about it and we want to be involved. In addition to that, we want to make sustainability accessible for all. So not just at our university, but connecting our community to this. So we've even connected with our local council, our local biosphere and different other organizations, as well as PhD students that are in marketing. For instance, we're meeting next yeah. week with a student in marketing where she actually has a consultancy business in branding and web design, and she's creating our website. It's these knock on effects happen when you start connecting with people that have the same values as you. And that's your ethos of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And then the last one we realized is the very important one is the capitalizing on opportunities. So we just started on this journey, not really knowing where it would go to, but we were very open-minded and reached out to people. And like every opportunity we saw coming along that was suited for us, we just jumped on it. And that's, I think, a big lesson we learned. Like you, you just got to get started with something. You create opportunities and you seize opportunities and just go mm -hmm. for it. And I think it... Um, we have this idea of what um, we're all in student voice or in student representation because we see mm -hmm. a discrepancy, something that needs to be fixed and something that needs to be better. And that can drive us to do wondrous things, but we don't need to aim for perfection immediately. Mm -hmm. Sometimes our goals need to have roll on and it's really difficult when we see something how it should be that we keep fighting battles, but instead sometimes it's easier to, and easier for us, our mental health, as well as more effective to start leveraging those connections, start capitalizing on the small things that are there. Yeah, so that's what we want to say, like the next part we want to explain is how you can use this framework of what, how we did our journey in your journey, whatever is your value or the project that you want to see happening at your university. So starting from the bottom, I want to ask you guys, well, you don't need to respond, this is <laughs> just get you to think, what are your values? Why are you here today, perhaps? What are the things that you care about most? And where do you see you want to go? And in that, then where is the gap? Where do you think things are needed? And who can help? 
who's in your network around you already. And then don't create something you think other people need, create something that other people want. And so who's interested and what is needed? Yes, and this is uh, like another important point that we want to emphasize and why we chose to organize these workshops for our university community and a broader community. Even though we're just two students, it's about the spheres of influence. Like you always have a bigger impact than you think. Like never underestimate the ripple effect of any of your actions. You just have to start doing something. You might influence the small people in the room, but they go out, they might influence somewhere else. Like it's all about planting seeds and they come to flourish but you are the one that have to do the little things and they do. Matter. Yeah, and I'm a massive fan, so my, I'm doing my PhD in psychology <laughs> stuff, so I can't help myself to put a lovely model up. Um, <laughs> so this is actually done uh, with Ron Byrne Brenner's ecological model. However, if, and it's normally in childhood development, but if we actually use it, and imagine yourself being the center of that individual. We actually have far more influence than we recognize we have. And it's through modeling our behavior. It's through the conversations we have informally. It's not always in the formal boardroom or meeting rooms that change can actually occur. It's through the day-to-day -day kind of conversations. And that's really where we saw. We didn't set up perfect meetings. Yes, we had those working meetings, but actually most of the connections we built were, oh, I know somebody, I know somebody. And it's through that. So if you imagine yourself as that individual, you have your family, your neighbors, your school, your work, whatever, but then they also have that for themselves. And then they have that for themselves. So it's amazing how we can have these ripple effects and have this small voice with huge impact implications that can happen. Mm -hmm. So yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions you're going to 